Say good evening, and it certainly is good to be back here on Wednesday night, isn't it? Amen. Amen. And uh, it certainly is good to be saved, isn't it? Amen. Amen. It'd be good to Peter to flash it up every once in a while during the sermon, (laughs) wouldn't it? (laughs) Amen. Amen. Well, we'll uh, take prayer requests tonight and, uh, and uh, ask the Lord to help. I'm glad that we can make known our request, aren't you, and to the Lord. Amen. Appreciate the prayer. We're in two scriptures this, uh, this evening, in the book of uh, John chapter 13 and the book of Jude. Uh, of course, only one chapter there. We're reading uh, three verses in the book of Jude. And uh, trust the Lord to help. I'm trying to think on build up, building up yourself, uh, a phrase we see in the book of Jude chapter 1. And uh, trust the Lord to help us. I'll look in the book of John, first of all, John chapter 13, and uh, read a couple of verses there and, uh, for our thoughts. And, and uh, trust the Lord to help. Uh, again, it's certainly good to be back and good to see you uh, in the Lord's house and Preacher asked me about the message, and I said it went good in the study. <laughs> and uh, if you've ever taught Sunday school or whatever, you know sometimes the preparing, and of course, if it don't move your heart, then it's not going to stir nobody else's heart for sure. But uh, I praise the Lord for His Word. We're looking in the Book of John, chapter thirteen, and verse thirty-four. And the Bible said, "A new commandment I give unto you, I, that you love one another." as I have loved you, and that you love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one to another. Our Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for salvation through the Lord Jesus and thank you for the privilege that we have to be here tonight. Long time since we've been able to meet and we thank you, Lord, for each one, uh, each prayer request, uh, the concerns and the burdens and the needs there. May we be mindful to, to think again and pray. Uh, at a later time, I pray you'd help as we call on you just tonight. 
And I pray in the message, may it go forth and find a lodging place, a resonating place in our hearts. Uh, from the Word of God, may we be stirred, comforted, and challenged in whatever, Lord, you'd see fit to work out in our lives from your Word. Bring to mind and heart the things you'd be pleased with. I pray for an unction anointing from heaven and a touch of the to be brought forth in the power of the Holy Spirit of God. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to look at this verse and then we move to the book of Jude and then trust the Lord to help to tie it together. Uh, several years ago, I had a fellow ask me, he said, do you know what the 11th commandment is? <laughs> and in his thinking, and I happen to know what he was thinking, or at least what he was having reference to, and he was talking about verse 34 of the book of John chapter 13, uh, where it says, a new commandment I give unto you that you love one another. And then Jesus goes on and says, as I have loved you, you know, I've read that verse several times. In fact, I knew when he was talking or the question he had asked me, he was thinking that's the, uh, the eleventh uh, commandment, but that you love one another. But uh, as I said, I've read that several times. And, uh, but uh, in studying this, I see something there and saw something that just uh, I'd not seen before. As we read the verse again, and he said, uh, as, as a new commandment are given to you, that you love one another as I have loved you. And I got to thinking about that, studying some in the book of 1 John, and of course it talks there in uh, John about a lot said about the love, love of God. In fact, one of the verses there, I believe in chapter 4, just makes a statement that God is love. God is love. But Jesus said, I, I want you to love one another as I have loved you. And you begin to think about that. Then at the very outset, you know, we might protest and said, well, that could never be done. How could we love as Jesus loved? Well, I got to thinking uh, we surely can do that or the Lord never would have told us to do that. And you say, well, what's your thinking how we could ever do that? Well, my thinking tonight is that in the book of Romans chapter 5 that the Holy Ghost has shed the love of God abroad in our hearts. And then in the book of Ephesians, I believe it said that uh, let it, let the, uh, uh, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. So the way I'm thinking that we're going to love as Christ loved us and as Christ loved we to love a, as I have loved, he said, uh, then we must partake of the divine nature of God. The only way that that could ever be possible. I got to thinking about that and it sure stirred my heart and I thought in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4 about that verse said we have this treasure in an earthen vessel and I said boy it sure is an earthen vessel when it comes to my case but thank God we got the treasure in the earthen vessel that the excellency of the power may be of God not of us amen and then to God be the glory. So he said I want you to love even as, as, as I've loved you but of this shall all men know you, my disciple, if you have love one for another. I was thinking about that, and I'll look at that some more, but I was thinking uh, one of the things that I had written down, uh, see if you can put that up, uh, the only happy, holy way to live. Uh, the only happy, holy way to live is on the highest level, and that's the level of Christian love. The level of Christian love. That goes up to a higher realm of living. And we see, I believe, some ways of getting there in the book of Jude, chapter 1, of course, one chapter. And we see some verses here I believe will help. And I'll think about that tonight. We see in verse 19 of the book of Jude, and it said that these be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the Spirit. Notice that, having not the Spirit, we can readily see that he's talking about lost people and people that don't know God because the Bible said in the book of Romans chapter 8 that if a man have not the Spirit of Christ, then he's none of his. So it said they have not the Spirit. And in verse 19, uh, these that separate themselves, sensual, having not the Spirit, but he said, but ye brethren. And then in the book of Jude, it talks here in, uh, uh, let's read verse 15. It said they execute judgment on all them and convince them of their un, uh, that are ungodly among them of their ungodly deeds that they have ungodly committed and all their hard speeches 
uh, which ungodly sinners have spoken against them. Four times in one verse, it talks about they're ungodly. So we're talking about the, the debauchery of sin here and the ungodliness. And I was thinking and impression about tonight, our first time back in a year, and uh, a lot of thoughts. I thought, you know, uh, and I'd, I'd like to have a good sermon. I wanted one to uh, start off uh, uh, in not having been here for a year. Uh, I remember a former pastor that I, you know, we had intermission between Sunday school and preaching like we do here, and that's been all I've ever been used to in growing up as just traditional, and I like that. It gives opportunities, for, and we hope that we can get back to where uh, we can have more of a fellowship. I kind of like shaking hands, you know, I hope we can get back to that. And, uh, of course, some said, uh, I heard one fellow said he well, ought not to never shake hands again. That's a gloomy view, ain't it? Uh, <laughs> Well, you'd want to invite somebody like that to eat supper, wouldn't you? Just right across the table from him, have a conversation with him. And, uh, but uh, I, I trust the Lord to help. I, but anyway, I said one Sunday I was all fired up and trying to get fired up. And so we was fellowshipping and shaking hands in the intermission. And there's a lady there. She left to pick at me more than she did left to eat. And I said, uh, pray for me. I'll preach a good sermon today. And she said, you can believe that I'm praying. So, but uh, so... You could see her desperate situation. But I don't, I don't look tonight, I'm thinking about, but he said, but you, brethren, are you beloved? You know, the world is spinning in our country. It's so sad, it's spiral, in a downward spiral, isn't it? And it's so uh, disturbing and requested tonight. We pray for our country. I appreciate all the prayer and the concern from our church that is in, in that direction that the Lord would help, have mercy and, uh, but I was thinking, you know, we that are saved. And, you know, it's a situation that we've been in, and I, I would readily admit it's affected me. You know, we changed uh, from, uh, from uh, the freedom of going and coming and doing, and, and we've been in, uh, in uh, situations like, like we've never been before, at least in my lifetime, that I've not seen this. And there's been other uh, things of... Uh, viruses and, and other things in, in other uh, polio and other things in the country that's taking place but in the situation that I've seen of uh, in uh, some in a lot of people of depression and we see the school kids are not doing so good because they need to be in school and you know we're sociable creatures you know we need to be around other people we need to communicate and uh, we don't need to be just locked up that has an effect on all of us. But I was thinking about with all that taken in view, I thank God we're here tonight, amen. And I trust the Lord will help and continue helping with our country and the situations of the pandemic and so on. But the ungodliness is my concern, the focus of thinking within our country of where we've gone and the, the and we could deal with that in a lot of aspects. But it says in verse 20 of this, and I want to look at that. And it said, But ye, brother, beloved, building up yourself in your most holy faith. And the thought that I've got tonight is building up. Building up yourselves. And he goes on in this verse and he gives us some things. And he said, In your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. That's a good start, isn't it? I thought about in the book of Acts chapter 16 and and, and the Paul, Apostle Paul put emphasis on that. When he started the church at Philippi, you know the first thing he did? Went down there to Riverside and started praying. He said it was, uh, they, they begin with prayer and calling on God. And that's, that's the very initial first thing we want to do in every situation. Many of us as Christians, you know, we, we exhaust everything. We're, we're about like this. We get something and, you know, especially men, men's bad for this. They'll get something and, you know, they're going to put it together. And after they put it together and had three pieces left over, they read the instruction. But you know what we ought to do to start out as Christians, praise God, we start with the basic and prayer and then read the instruction. And we get started off right. But I want to look tonight, and he's talking about building up your faith in the most holy faith and praying in the Holy Ghost and keeping yourself in the love of God. And I want to deal with that. I've got four points and things I want to think about tonight. Uh, first of all, your holy faith. I'm glad faith in the Lord Jesus Christ is the holy thing, isn't it? It's a sacred thing. And then the heart. And God is love and brotherly love. And I'll think about that. The heart, 
My second point is, is the heart, the, the, the matter tonight, is the heart is, is, the, is the focus of the matter, is the heart. And I'll think about that some. But I'll think about the faith tonight. And uh, whenever we think about that, building up yourselves in the most holy faith, immediately we say, well, how are we going to build up ourselves? Well, we're going to build up ourselves through the Word of God. The book of Romans, what is it, 10, 17, faith come by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And you say, well, I never could be, and you think that any of us could be what we call Bible scholars. Well, I don't know about all that. I've met some country people that know quite a bit about this book right here. And I've met some country people where this book controlled their life. So the thought tonight is that we ought to try to master this book and let this book master us. And that would be building ourselves up in the most holy faith. And we could say a lot about faith tonight. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. And whatsoever not of faith is sin. A lot of verses in there and we're thinking about faith. And then we think about Ephesians chapter 2, for by grace through faith. And it was through faith tonight in our trust in the Lord Jesus, the reason that we're saved and on the way to heaven tonight. And that we have that divine nature imparted unto us so that we can love others as Christ loves them. You know the instruction to the husband. Book of Ephesians chapter 5 is love your wives even as Christ loved the church. You ever thought about that? That's something to think about, isn't it? Boy, that might diffuse a lot of problems in, around the house. You know it. Just love your wife even as Christ loved the church. My sweet wife Beverly is with her, the accident and other things and she's uh, come out to worse her by a long ways than me and I'm hipping with some things and so when I, in fact, I swept this morning without even being nudged. And so after I'd finished that, and she said, well, I appreciate you doing that. And you know what I said? It's my pleasure. I learned that from going through the line up yonder in Wilkesboro, you know. Hey, Amen. Well, that sounds a lot better, don't it? Then, well, I went ahead and done it. I didn't want to. And, of course, now, I don't know how genuine that was about it. it's my pleasure, you know. I'd have to just let that, let the jury still out on that. But we see here loving as Jesus loves, divine nature. That's a higher level of living tonight, Christian love. So we see the, the holy faith. And then I thought about the heart. The heart. Ruth Graham, the wife of Billy Graham, she said, we cannot convict anybody and we can't convert anybody. Used to have a deacon in my church and he'd say this to me, he said, preacher, we can't put it in nobody's heart. Ruth Graham went on and made this statement. She said that we need to do the possible and trust God to do the impossible. Because the miracles is not our department. But I'm glad we've got one that can, aren't you? I had a preacher advise me in the ministry, the, one of the first churches I ever pastored, and he gave me a little advice about, you know, I was, I was out the gate and wanted to really uh, do good the first time out, and he, he gave me a little instructions about uh, some things I might say at the very opening. He said, you could start out and say, I'm not a miracle worker, but thank God I know the one that is. That's all important thing, isn't it, that we know Him. But the heart tonight, I got to thinking, Lot said in the Word of God about the heart. And the heart of the matter tonight is the heart. The Bible said in the book of Proverbs, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. In the Word of God, the Bible said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And then in the book of Romans, we see the Bible said about believing, if we believe that, that, uh, that, uh, Christ died for us. God raised him from the dead. If you believe and confess with your mouth, thou shalt be saved. And then it goes on in those verses and says, with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. With the heart man believeth unto righteousness. I was reading over in, in, the, in the Old Testament in the book of, of 1 Samuel chapter 10, I believe it is. And it's, that chapter is talking about Samuel anoint Saul king. First king Israel ever had was Saul. 
But there's a verse in there, I believe it's verse 26, that just kind of jumped out. And I like it when it jumps out and gets your attention, amen. You just read and said, and you, you, we, the country term we use is we do a double take. Praise God, we we'll go back and read it again. So there's something good there. But it says in that verse, I believe verse 26, that after Saul had been anointed as king, and people began to disperse, and the Bible said he went, he went home. But it says this, I believe in that verse, and Saul went home to Gilbeth, and, and there went with him a band of men whose hearts God had touched. Amen. Don't you like that? And I was thinking, praise God, I'd like to have a bunch of people around me whose hearts that God has touched. And I'd like to be one of them people that's a circman around somebody and with my heart touched, amen, whose hearts God has touched. But I thought about that as I thought more about Saul and the, and the, and the sad outcome of King Saul. And we know the story of Saul and it didn't turn out good at the end. In fact, he had an evil spirit. But I got to thinking about this, that these men that were around him, you ever heard this expression in the country, we use that, we're talking about, I, I know I've seen people and you have through the years and thank God for any parent can be able to give a child advantage. But we used to, the old timers used to say this about somebody, if they, if they were privileged, had an advantage to, their parents were able to do that. They'd say they sure had a good showing. Anybody ever heard that besides me? Brother, me and Brother F.C., we know all them old phrases, don't we? Amen. We got, way back, huh? we, got way back, we got that right. Had a good showing. And I thought about that. I said, praise God, that's what happened to Saul. He had a good showing, didn't he? God surrounded him with people whose hearts that God had touched. He had some advantages here, didn't he? And you know, I was thinking about that. Here's a sad commentary on our, our society that we're living in. And you know, it sure is a blessing to my heart tonight. Look out here. And it's a blessing to see everybody. Amen. You know, I was in a service one time. I, I was, you, ought, you ought to be careful how you word things. Said it sure is good to see. I was, I was in a church preaching where I'd been before. And it sure is good to see uh, everybody here tonight and see some new ones, I said. And then it's good to see you old people. That's the wrong way to do it. I should have said it's good to see the familiar faces. Praise God. But what I started to say tonight, it sure is good to see each and every one here tonight, but it sure is good to see some young people here, isn't it? Ain't that a blessing? I know we went up to West Virginia, those schools of Preacher Duncan, and it's so exciting to me and, and each time he'd let me say a little something. And, uh, but the thing that so impressed me was, you know, he'd have, uh, I don't know, one, one school that we, our church supplied all the bags for that, and I, there's 182 there. And that was one of the best experiences I had, I believe. They had a, it was a, 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 the elementary school, and then they had the middle school, and we're all, they were all there on the same campus. And they had a gym <laughs> there for the, for the elementary, and it didn't have no uh, bleacher, didn't have no seats. And those little fellows just come out there and just sat on the floor, and they were so excited, and we, we just had a great time. But I got to thinking, I got me stirred up, and I said, praise God. And you know, it's exciting, especially when you get just a little older, to get around some young people that's got energy. <laughs> get a little older, that'll, that'll sink in for you. Praise God, you get up in the mornings and say, you know, you start talking to yourself. Now you need to get up. Now you ain't got there yet, but you know, you got something to look forward to. You got something really to look forward to when you get to that point in life. You, you know, you wake up and you say, you know, it's like one fellow said, I'm going to hit the ground running. He said, I may hit the ground, but, but it's, it's, it, I won't be running, I can tell you that. Sure is good to see each one. Sure is good to see some young faces here on a Wednesday night, ain't it? Amen. You know, sometimes people that are older think they're going to be here forever. We're going to move off the scene one of these days. It'll be good to have somebody else to come in and take it on, won't it? Amen. So we see the heart. 
The book of Acts, again, whenever Paul was down there praying, there by the riverside praying, there's something wonderful happened. There's a lady, a seller of purple. Her name was Lydia. And I'm partial to that name, Lydia. Yeah. My aunt said, Lydia, my granddaughter, said she ain't got Papa around her finger. She, she, she got her whole hand on him. He just moves and direct Lydia, sell her purple. But you know what happened to Lydia in the Bible that was special? The Bible said Lydia, whose heart God had opened. God is in the heart opening business. We don't do that, but God does. But I thought about Saul again, and I think about uh, things, you know, there's people in churches that, as our church, where the Word of God's preached, where you go into, and we're hoping, uh, well, Sunday, we, from the auditorium here, we'll have auditorium class, have a, a lesson taught from the Bible, the Word of God, and, and what a blessing that is. But you know, there's people in churches, and the, what we Bible preach in churches, and people that are excited and stirred up about the Lord. And there's people that attend those churches, and a lot of them, they don't have a good end outcome. I thought about Saul had that advantage, have people around him whose hearts God has touched. And you say, well, what's the, what's the problem, preacher? I believe it's this. The matter is the heart is the heart of the matter. And if you don't get it in your heart, then you ain't going to hang in there. Because whenever the things and the dark clouds and all that, but praise God, whenever he can come in the darkest of hours and speak to your heart. Amen. In your heart. That's where it all takes place. So we see number two in the heart. And then a thought about God is love. And then in the book of Hebrews chapter 13, verse 1 just one verse there, it says that, that's a complete verse, is it says, uh, let brotherly love continue. God is love. Thank God I'm glad that he is love, aren't you? And if we're walking in the love of God, you say, what's the evidence of that? Well, according to the book of 1 John, if you're walking in the love of God, there's an obedience to it. We're keeping his commandments, doing what he says. Put that other thing up I had, Petey. When our delight is in the love of God, our desires will be in the will of God. Psalms 37 said, Delight yourself also in the Lord and He'll give you the desires of your heart. So whenever we're walking in love, that's a wonderful place to be, isn't it? Okay, our verse here says, Keeping yourself in the love of God. Now it might be noted there, that uh, in, in that particular verse, verse 21, keep yourselves in the love of God. Now, somebody jump on that and misunderstand. It does not say keep yourself saved. It says keep yourself in the love of God. Now, that keeping there has with it the meaning of keep an eye on it, be watchful. And you have to be watchful as a Christian. You say, what happens? You won't keep yourself in the love of God. You say, what will happen? Well, something will happen that's adverse and negative and maybe somebody might do something to you and whatever. And if you're not careful, you say, what happened, preacher? A root of bitterness liable to creep in. And then the love's not there. There's some assurance. That was my first outline. I was going to preach on eternal security, my first point, but I just might inject that right here. In the book of 1 John, chapter 3 and verse 14, I believe it is, it said that we know we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. One of our memory verses, John chapter 5, verse 24, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever heareth my word and believe on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation because he has passed from death unto life. If we only had those two verses, but we got a whole lot, uh, uh, a lot of other verses that confirms to us that, praise God, salvation is eternal. But I got to thinking, preacher, just about those two verses in John chapter 5, verse 24, said we've passed from death unto life. Well, how in the world could somebody pass from death unto life and then revert back to death again? That ain't happening. 
Because the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And whenever I receive the gift of salvation, and the Bible said we have redemption through His blood, what? Even the forgiveness of sins. And whenever He forgave my sins, the book of of Revelation chapter 1 verse 5 said unto Him that loved us and washed us from our sins, look at this, in His own blood. So He's washed me from my sins by His own blood. And therefore, my sins are gone. You say, what does that do? The wages of sin is death. I'm no longer under the condemnation of sin. You ask me why I'm happy tonight uh, as a little country preacher, because my sins are gone. They're underneath the blood, thank God. They've been washed and cleansed. I'll not have to stand in condemnation. Romans chapter 8, verse 1, There is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. I'm not under condemnation. I pass from death unto life. I'm alive, thank God. Amen. I'm alive in Jesus. And then I would put up my other little thing about the physical sense. I'm thinking tonight about love tonight. Even in a physical sense, love is the very atmosphere of life and growth. Do you know that love is the very atmosphere of life and growth? I was reading that about a survey that had been taken. It's just a common sense survey. They'd taken a survey of children that are unloved and neglected. And of course, the result and the findings of that was that they were much slower in growth. And the problems and the difficulties that come along with it. Praise God tonight, even in the physical sense, love is the very atmosphere of life and growth. Love tonight, amen. Boy, I thank God that God loves me, amen. Wonderful things in the Bible I see, but this is the dearest to me, that Jesus loves me. Dr. John Rollins said that was the greatest thought that he had ever comprehended in his mind was that Jesus loves me. He said a blessing. So love tonight. We're walking on a higher plane. We're walking in the love of God. God is love. And then my last thought tonight is brotherly love. Book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 1. Let brotherly love continue. John chapter 15 verse 6. Jesus said continue ye in my love. That's a sweet thing, ain't it? Amen. And I've been able, and you have the same, and I thank God for it, to see that love demonstrated and and displayed. I've been the recipient, thank God, of that love from other Christians. Ain't that a blessing? And people express it in different ways just by witnessing and saying it sometimes. And then the Bible says, there's a verse that said, love not just in word, but in deed and in truth. And I've had people love me in deed, amen, in truth. Ain't that a blessing? How wonderful it is to grow up in a home where there's a lot of love around. That's a blessing, ain't it? I was thinking about my dear mother. I had a, when you get old, you have things, you you young people, this this is just a little uh, something to let you know what's out there and what you got to look forward to. When you go to the doctor, I had what they've got things now for us old people. They call it wellness appointment. And they try to see if we're still thinking. So I had one of those that said, my first question was, have you lost interest in doing things? And I was afraid to say what was honest is I ain't had no interest to do nothing no way. No interest to lose. But I didn't do that because if I did, I wouldn't be here tonight. They'd done that me on the road somewhere else. But but she gave me three words, and I'm going to give you three words and a little later talk on. I'm going to see if you remember those three words. <laughs> and one of my words was kitchen. Kitchen. And you know, I took a memory, or took a memory course one time. <laughs> I don't know how that turned out. But anyway, I ordered it. One of them correspondence things. Tell you how to remember. 
It got so hard and difficult, I just dropped it and went on. But anyway, he said kitchen was one of my words. But I found out in my memory course that you can remember things if you associate it with something else. That helps you to remember. So immediately I thought, you know, but I had to do this whenever you're there and you can't half hear. I said, do you mind if I repeat the words to you to be sure I've heard the words that I'm supposed to tell you later on? He said, well, that'll be okay. You can do that. But anyway, my association with kitchen, I thought about my dear mother in growing up. You're talking about some expressive love. Cook three square meals a day. Can you believe that? Three square meals a day. And the labor that went into that raised four kids. I heard Dr. Howe say he grew up in poverty. And he said his dear mother trying to raise him and his sister. There's times when they didn't have enough food to eat. He said the first hamburger he ever ate, there's some people from the church brought it to their home. But he'd seen his mama not eat herself in order to let he and his sister eat. We didn't have a situation like that. We had plenty of food. We growed the food and put it in cans. Mama canned 153 quarts of green beans one year. You said, what happened? That's the reason I love green beans. We eat every one of them. <laughs> I growed up on green beans. I still love them. She planted that desire in my heart and in my stomach and everywhere else. But I was thinking, Dr. Howe said he thought whenever he was growing up, he said his mother, and he said he thought, you know, whenever I get grown and get a job, said I'm going to make a queen out of my mother. But he said that he did grow up and he did get a job, but he found out he couldn't make a queen out of mama because she was already a queen. But I related that to my dear mama, what a queen she was. And you say, well, I... I <laughs> I was preaching in one form of pastor and I'd tell these childhood stories and I had a fellow after service said, I wish you'd preach the Bible and quit giving all them to Well, I'm preaching the word, but I'm giving a few childhood stories that I love to talk about. But I was thinking about my dear mama doing all that cooking in the kitchen and making those meals. And she would have sometimes three different vegetables. And you know what she done? She put them out in bowls. She had an attractive table when we went to eat. We don't do that now. If we fix the bowl of soup, it's on the stove. Just don't drip it on the eyes when you dip it out of the pot. That's how we, there ain't no pretty bowl nowhere. Now you go get it there. <laughs> Why mess up a bowl, you know? We're going to have to wash it before we put it in the dishwasher. What does the dishwasher do? We wash everything, scrub it down, get it clean and put it in a dishwasher. <laughs> Kitchen. My mother. Let brother love continue. Praise God. Love tonight. You know the Bible says that love covers for multitude of sins, don't it? I want to thank God for a good fellowship here. You know, in the situation that we've been in now going on a year. It's not been easy, has it? I've talked to a number of people that it's really, let me, I guess the word be, it took a toll. <laughs> you know, a preacher friend of mine said he had some people that felt comfortable now coming back to church and said it excited him. He thought it was his preaching that was doing, doing the drawing, but he said he heard some of them say, said, I'm just glad to be in church to get out of the house. <laughs> you know, whenever you think your preaching's ready to draw them in, then that really helps you, you know. He said, praise God, I'll preach a good next Sunday maybe. Yeah. He said, I'm just glad to be here to get out of the house. But you know, I might add this to that. I don't care what motivation they do, if they if come, I'm happy, aren't you? Amen. Amen. I ain't always had the right motivation of you. I've preached a lot of times because I had to say something. But thank God and I praise the Lord tonight for those times where I had something to say. God's good, ain't he? 
Let brotherly love continue. And that has a drawing power within itself. That has a drawing power within itself. It helps a person physically, amen, to have love around you. And it's wonderful to have somebody love you. Amen. 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 Thank God for that. I said to my sweet bride before I left, I said, I want you to pray for me. And the first, the last thing, whenever I start to pull the door to, I holler back and she hollers back, I love you. I kind of like hearing that, don't you? Jesus said, let brotherly love continue. Love them like I loved you. That's a high plane of loving, ain't it? That's a happy place to be. Let's stand and pray tonight. I wonder if we pray tonight, and it sure is good to be back. And I've got some needs and burdens on my heart and ask you to pray about. And I'm just going to lift my hand toward heaven tonight. Maybe you want to do the same. Our Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we, with hands raised toward heaven, got burdens and needs and things on our heart. Maybe there's needs here represented, that's, and there is, that's not been spoken tonight, but Lord, there may be some, just some immediate pressing need. And Lord, I pray tonight, I pray you'd help me tomorrow. The family and no doubt there'll be those as there is in most funerals that I've, I've ever tried to preach in that don't know Jesus. And I pray you'd help me in love and, and in the power of the Holy Spirit of God to share the gospel of Jesus. May some heart be opened even tomorrow to be receptive to that message should they be there. Lord, I'm glad you opened hearts. I'm glad you're in my heart tonight, dwelling there. I thank you. And Lord, I thank you. I pass from death unto life. And I pray, Lord, you'd help us to keep ourselves in the love of God. We'll thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.